Kobe Farhi, a vocalist of Orphan Land, um, 43 years old, from Israel. Okay, so uh, you have corrected me before this interview. Someone told me that you have a Muslim in the band, but that is not correct, correct? Um, no, we, we don't have a Muslim uh, in the band as a, as a permanent member of the band. We're all Jews from Israel, but we did cooperate with uh, Muslims in the past. Um, from uh, you know a choir of, of <laughs> violin players or or uh, this orchestra that we used, um, we took Arab bands with us on tour from uh, Israel, from Jordan, uh, some from Tunisia. So we toured with Muslim bands maybe four times, taking them with us on, on the roads. Um, but a permanent member of the band, no. Uh, it, it just happened to be that we're all from Israel and Jews. Not that I have anything against or judging. The quality of a musician by his religion or stuff like that so it just happens to be like that but uh to an outsider who is not from anywhere near israel or any middle eastern area uh orphan land does incorporate some middle eastern sounding elements could you talk about that is that strictly jewish is it strictly arab what is it well it's it's definitely strictly Middle Eastern. Uh, what is Arab or Jews or Jewish? Uh, it's it's a very hard question because wh when you go throughout history, uh, it's hard to know the source of things or, or of where they come from. But when you go back in history, both Arabs and Israelis or Muslims and Jews, mainly from the Middle East, they are historically brothers. Uh, everyone knows the Bible, the sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. They're both considered, at least by the Jews and Muslims, to be fathers of Jews and Muslims. Uh, and, and Arabs and Israelis are, are calling each other cousins till, till that day. So we do use a lot of motifs from the Middle East, which is instruments, scales, uh, all these type of things. And uh, when we started the band back in the 90s, we thought that we should bring something from that area. We should form a new genre in, in metal music instead of trying to sound like Morbid Angel or, or any kind of an American band, we should bring some flavors from our region. And that, that way you make the metal scene to be wider and, and more interesting. And that's the place we're coming from. So the best thing will be to reflect the motives, the folklore, the culture of our region, rather than just trying to copy an American band. So that's how we formed a new genre that's called Oriental Metal metal that comes from the Orient side of the world and those instruments that we use and, and those motives are both Arabs or Jew, Jewish or it could be Turkish but it's, it's from the region and, and that's what matters. I will include myself in this question. Um, most people only know about Israel, what is told on American news, things like that. Um, is it unusual to hear someone from Israel sing about peace and calling Muslims brothers. Uh, could you talk about that? Because it, it's, were you punished for that? Were, uh, do, do you suffer any kind of uh, backlash from fellow Israelis for this attitude? Well, we suffer mostly from people who misunderstood the band, because there's a lot of misconceptions about the band. Um, we do unify enemies with our music, but but it's not like we're saying in our lyrics, hey guys, let's hug each other and make this kumbaya thing. Um, our songs are very tragic and, and speaks about the tragedies and about death and about the conflicts. But the message behind the band is unifying people. And uh, in most cases, we get a lot of compliments from people both in Israel and the Arab world because we just try to bring people together and we don't take sides. Um, we think that there are bad things in both sides. We don't think that there is one side to blame while the other is a saint. There's no war that you can say that one of the sides are completely unjust while the other is, you know. Um, so we are also bashed by, by, I don't know, brainwashed people. Because once you're brainwashed, it doesn't matter what you say, your brain is washed. And um, you have all these sort of opinions and anyone that doesn't come along with your agenda just doesn't work. That's how fascism works. Uh, uh, for some people, 
if we say, if we criticize our government so they, they think that we're traitors, that's fascism right there. Uh, you have the will and the right to say whatever you want without being a traitor. And, and uh, I think that that majority of the world today is going into fascism again. That's, that's the way I see it. Uh, but, but we do what we do and uh, we can get, people can clap their hands for us or, or shake our hands or bash us. It happens uh, in the internet or, or you know on Facebook. Um, but that's the way it is. I mean, and, and, and it's okay because um, that's people's choice to be fascists or to bash people or to disagree with anyone who is not in their opinion. But I think that in most cases people do appreciate what we do uh, and and uh, respect what we do. I know that uh, because of the humor that I've had on my radio show or in my magazine, um, people think that I might be a certain way that I only try to choose the most offensive path. But um, some people have been uh, attracted to my humor who are of, uh, let's say, the hateful skinhead variety. And they send me brochures. They have actually printed brochures uh, to try to make people anti-Semitic, they say that the word goy means uh, it's a non-human that's to be a slave of the Jews. And so uh, I think that in America, when things like that are immediately silenced, it's more harmful because it drives that underground. But rather, it's, it's better to talk about this, what it really means, because no one would ever ask you that. Um, what does it really mean? And by the way, I must preface that Christianity also has texts that are very nasty toward unbelievers. So I, I, I honestly think that we are all racists in our inner self. I think that even the most open-minded ones are racists. Not by any deliberate intention of being bad. It's just the way that we're educated. We're educated that if someone is different, it's not like us. So, so if, if you and I are, are similar, the other one is not. So we always have an opinion about him because he's different from what we are. Even if you and me like black metal and he's into doom metal, he's different. Ah, that guy likes doom metal. That's how it starts. From, from the difference, which I think the differences between us are one of the most beautiful things in the world because that way you can have an interesting world when we're different. But I think that any sort, any kind of culture, they have this racism uh, in there, uh, in Judaism, being a chosen one. I mean, God chose the Jew and not you. It has some, it has something that sounds a little bit racist in there, and I think, I don't think it was the intention, but but I think that that's what Jews over history used to just throw it on other people that they are goys and not Jews and not chosen ones, and I think that some uh, maybe maybe one of the sources of of antisemitism lies within the fact that people actually believed that God have chosen the Jews upon them and they started to ask why? What's so special about that guy more than than, than me? And, and so people always try to prove that the Jews are not so special. And, and every time a Jew failed, they point the finger and, and say, you see, you're not so perfect. I think this is, this is the source of, of anti-Semitism. If, even if you look at the Bible, when God is receiving the gift from, uh, you, you know, the story of Cain and Abel, there's a murder there because God is receiving one of the gifts and denies the gift from the other one. Right up there, there's a murder. Um, the brothers of, of Joseph, they throw Joseph to the pit because Jacob likes Joseph more than the rest of his sons. With Isaac and Ishmael, Ishmael is going to the desert while Isaac stays with his father Abraham and look at Jews and Arabs up until that moment. Um, and, and, and there are more stories, even in the Bible, any time that, that the brothers are fighting and one of the parents prefers the other one, that, that is a, a, 
a source for creating of hate and, and conflict and uh, so I think that that this is the main problem the main problem the main problem is people people uh, there was a guy in history that says the main problem of humanity is humanity <laughs> we categorize people we have opinions about Muslims without meeting Muslims we have opinions about Jews without meeting Jews we have opinions about metal people thinking they are Satanists without even talking to them you know and and I think everyone in society is having those problems uh, if you see a blonde uh, wearing a miniskirt she must be a slut and, and that's the way you judge everything uh, and I think that it's the, the, the source of, of the problem is in our education they educate us about mathematics and trigonometry and all this bullshit at school but they don't teach us about human behavior how to behave how to be a good human being this is this is out of our education system for some reason do you think that you, um, American education is more about indoctrination and propaganda than about actual knowledge? I think every education, not only the American, is about propaganda and, and, and it's about... They give you the, the illusion that you educate yourself, that you have a degree, but the stuff that they put in your system is mostly propaganda and bullshit. I mean, why do I have to learn about nationality and, and trigonometry? rather than a human behavior. Why don't they teach us how to behave? Why don't they teach us how to be a good human being? Um, it's, it's, it's all wrong in America, in Israel, in the Arab world, in Europe. I think the education is mainly teaching us, trying to keep us, I would say stupid. It's easy to control stupid people. Not because we are stupid, but they educate us to be stupid. It's easy to control people who you can manipulate very easily with the press. It's easier to send soldiers to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Obedience is easier if you just not if you're not educated the right way because if you are educated the right way you'll be full of questions. Run now to the hills and attack those people. Now you start to ask those questions. Why should I run to that hill? Who who is in that hill? Um, Maybe you run and then I'll run after you, see if you're coming back. But if you're a product of society, you'll just run to the hills. And, and, and there's a reason why soldiers are so young. Because they're just in this point where they are very young, 18 years old. They just obey. They don't ask questions. Um, and so I think that, yeah, the education is fucked up everywhere. I must ask you something that I fear that you might not want to answer because you are very respectful of other people. But um, I personally do not believe that Jesus ever existed. I know that you like myths. What do you really think? I don't believe he existed. He's called Jesus of Nazareth, but in his timeline, Nazareth never existed. Well, I cannot prove to you if he existed or not. So that's fair enough for you for not believing uh, if, if Jesus was there or not. I do think that he existed because both the Jews or, the, I mean, the Christianity was formed 300 years after Jesus died. So let's say the Jews did approve that he, he, he was there. Uh, during the times of the Roman Empire. The thing is that I think that the, the, the character of Jesus with Christianity doesn't have anything to do with the real dude, the real Jewish guy that was out there. But I agree with your point. We can just speak about it. No one can prove he existed. There's nothing he wrote and signed as Jesus. Uh, no archaeology, no, no, I don't know, grave. So maybe maybe it didn't exist. Maybe it, it could be it could be literature as far as we're concerned. It could be something that, that just people wrote on a book. You sing in death metal vocals as well as the clean vocals. 
and it sounds like you're a trained vocalist. Could you tell me about that or what made you sing in what appears to be these incredible scales that you do? Well, I come from the Middle East, so uh, I know how to use these scales of quarter tones and an and oriental way of singing. Um, usually in the West or in the States, uh, it's a very linear kind of scale. So it's Do, Re, Mi. It's very, uh, it's straight. While in the Middle East, it's more kind of a wave thing. It could be, uh, it could be more without any lines in it. It could be more like a wave. And uh, I, I do like to express this way of, of singing. And uh, I also think that growling is great because it's a great way of expression. You, you, you can express uh, anger or, or frustration or pain with, with growlings. I think it's the best way to, to express it. So I, I don't give up all those forms of singing. I mentioned uh, earlier that you seem to have a love of myth, story, mythology. Could you talk about your involvement with Melted Space? The band? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, Melted Space is a great band. Uh, they contacted me and, and wanted me to, to sing uh, on their album. And, and of course I agreed and I think it's a great album. And uh, it was great to work with them. Um, I think art, it's like theater. I, I am, I'll be willing to, to sing anything, uh, I think, except for maybe, I don't know, neo-Nazis propaganda songs, but rather than that, I, I'm willing to sing even songs that praise Satan, you know, it's, it's, it's art. And, and I'm willing to, you know, Frank Zappa once said, there aren't any dirty words in language. It's just the propaganda that made words to be dirty. But those words are sometimes the best words to describe something. So I think it's great to, to use motives, words, ideas in music. And, and I'm privileged always to be a guest in, in bands music from Melted Space to, to others. In Christianity, there is Lucifer or Satan. Yeah. And actually, a lot of Christians think that uh, Beelzebub and Lucifer are the same demon. They call it the devil, where in their minds there's only one. I, I don't know. But uh, is there an equivalent evil spirit in Judaism? Yeah, I mean, Satan is basically taken from the Hebrew word Satan. It's like Sabbath is taken from Shabbat. So a lot of those names are taken from Judaism. A lot of, a lot of Christian motives are taken from, from Judaism. Christianity basically was born out of Judaism. Um, so yeah, there are many demons are actually taken from Hebrew. Belzebub, it's in Hebrew. But wasn't he originally a Phoenician god and became a demon after conquering? Yeah, I mean, everything is coming from the Phoenicians. I mean, even the, al the Hebrew alphabet and, and, and many of the things are coming from the Phoenician, which are probably the most ancient uh, ones that also inspired Hebrew and Judaism and, and stuff like that. Um, but when you, when you take those names, Samael or uh, Behemoth, all, all those names are, are basically from Hebrew, taken from Hebrew uh, Kabbalah or mythology or, or, I don't know, black magic and stuff like that. So you can find equivalents in, in Judaism, sure. I want to ask you about uh, a certain part of black metal called NSBM, which I find funny because I think that if Germany won, first of all, I don't think the regime would have lasted long because historically such things do not last long, but long-haired metalheads would not be appreciated by fascist or Nazi regimes. Uh, but the NSBM, I think, oddly enough, it came from Scandinavia, but I could be wrong because I don't know enough about black metal to say, but could you tell me your opinion about the whole anti-Semitic or NSBM part of black metal? Because there is no counter voice to that. Well, I, I would want to make an interview with, with these people to understand why do they have these opinions and, and what, what are, is their agenda. Um, I don't support anti-Semitism in any way or any racism uh, in any way. And I think that, that 
I don't know, some of these people maybe had a, I don't know, a wrong childhood or being ripped off by some guy and then overshaped their opinion about a whole culture. I don't really know. Um, I think that judging a complete population, shaping your opinion about a complete population, I mean, let's say, saying all Americans are dumb or trash or eating junk food. How stupid is that? I mean, you, you cannot put a tag on, on a complete community and tag them. You cannot say it about Jews, not about Muslims, not about anything. The, the only thing you can say is that our education is fucked up and that education creates products who are happen to be violent or peacemakers or, or I don't know. There was a guy that told me one time that you cannot find any violent guy in Tibet because they were educated for peace, for tolerance, for meditation. So I take it, it's all education. We're all the same and we're born and being educated and shaped by this education system to be what we are. You can be anti-Semite because your father was anti-Semite and the way he talked about Jews, that, that's enough to make you an anti-Semite. So, I don't know what's behind those bands. I think it's stupid, but I'm willing to have a conversation with them just to, because because rather than just saying oh you guys are stupid and anti-semite just to put that tag in them I want to understand how did you get that opinion uh, uh, how, how did you shape your agenda to be the way it is what's what's behind your agenda what what do you do, do you have anything against me what did I ever do to you we never spoke we never met uh, I don't know I might be the one that will save your life in, 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 in one occasion. Who knows? I mean, how can you shape your opinion? So, I would say that I will be interested to speak with those people and to understand what is their engine behind their agenda. Do you think that maybe it was shock value? That's more of a hardcore punk thing because metal should be an escape. Maybe not in your case because you're very politically engaged, but uh, do you think it might be the shock factor? Or do you think that they actually believe that Jews are of a hive mind where all think alike. You said yourself that you have differences that you might have yeah. been, uh, there might have been some backlash for some of your opinions. You're not a slave to an agenda, correct? No, I, I do think that those people shape their opinions about Jews by propaganda. Uh, Jews are controlling the world or, or I don't know, these Illuminati ideas that we, we have controlling all the money uh, uh, in the world, but, but that's not the case. Jews have been persecuted all of their lives. So if we control everything, who can per persecute us? I mean, we should, we should kick his ass. But, but that's not the case. Jews have been minority in, in many of the places that they, they lived. And according to, to that fact, they always tried to educate themselves to be the best because they were minority so they always wanted to be lawyers and doctors and accountants because they wanted to, to, to succeed as, as a minority they wanted to be equal and uh, I don't think that they control the world I don't think the Jews control the world I'm not a rich person uh, and, and I'm not a part of any controlling society or, or, or I don't know and if someone has something against me just because of the way that I was born as a Jew and some guy cut my dick and circumcised me when I was eight days old, if you have an opinion about me and if you decide who I am just because of that, I think that's a bit of stupid. I want to know your opinion if you have seen Mel Gibson's The Passion because yeah. he made religious fiction look like it was history yeah. and he had the Aramaic language but he did not realize that the Sanhedrin could have condemned Jesus on their own authority and at first I heard that uh, it made Christians angry that the Jews betrayed Jesus but that wasn't that his whole plan the suicide by Roman that's an idiotic concept in itself but what is your opinion of that movie? Was it harmful? I think that people are afraid of, of movies because, because people shape their opinions about even, even, even a movie. Jews have been called Christ killer for, for decades and have been persecuted by Christians and the Inquisition because of the death of Christ for, for, for centuries maybe. So they have a fear that, that you know, 
they will be persecuted again and maybe that's why they have this trauma and, and paranoia from, from a movie. I'll be honest with you, who cares? <laughs> like, it, I mean, if that story is real, it was 2000 years ago. So the guys in 2000 years ago betrayed Jesus and they happened to be Jews, okay? You can find Jews who are rapists, thieves, angels, great human beings, doctors, uh, people of innovation. Who cares about the Jews of 2000 years ago? Why do I have to be the one to blame? Because of some dudes who did something 2000 years ago. And maybe it didn't ha happen at all. Don't you think it's stupid? Don't you think it's a little bit... Strange? I mean, how can you deal with that? I didn't kill Jesus. It was 2000 years ago. I don't know if he even existed. I know I just look like him. That's it. <laughs> okay, on another side of the coin, uh, you must have heard of the organization or the people who call themselves Antifa. Yeah. Do you think they go too far the other way? Or what is your opinion? I don't want to lead you in your... You know, I think every, every idea is al always great at its basics and then people destroy it. I think, let's say, let's take religion. The basic idea of religion is to be a good human being, to help the poor, uh, to believe that there is a force, a mighty force that you should work and think and, and I mean, and, and then people destroy it and do things on behalf which gives a bad reputation. So the people, the religious people of today doesn't represent religion. I think that people always destroy it. If you take ve vegan people, they destroy veganism, <laughs> feminism. Some women just hate men more than being feminists and, and they call it feminism. So feminism is important, veganism is also important, but people, they destroy it. And I think that Antifa is... I don't know, I think they sometimes make, make mistakes. Well, what I wondered is, um, free speech should be free, even if it is nasty in some way, because only extreme people would resonate with a nasty message. Yeah. And I think that if you block a message, you make it seem more cool, and the only people who hear it are people inside the dark circles. They never bring that kind of content to light where they can have conversation with someone like you or uh, someone else you know they only hear it from people who are convinced of that and if friendship is more important to you than actually realizing if knowledge is valid but you know it, it's a question I mean I, I don't have a solid opinion about it because I mean is there any limit for freedom of speech or should it be completely free I mean if you have charisma like Charles Manson, you know, and, and you'll convince people to go and, and kill other people. I mean, let's face it, Charles Manson never killed anyone himself. He, his hands, he doesn't have blood on his hands. But with words and, 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 and his ability and charisma to, to, to convince people, he drove them to do these lunatic acts. So. Is he is he guilty or not in the name of freedom of speech? Because he just told him to do things. He didn't do it. So why why did he went to jail? Did he go to jail? I mean, what what, what do you say about it? I mean, uh... well, I don't know the answer to this. So I, I want to ask people like you because you actually devote your life to these I, pursuits. I think, I think freedom of speech should be stretched as much as we can, but I think there should be a limit because just of the the example that I gave you with Charles Manson. Uh, I think that words have a lot of power, uh, and and you should you should know how to how to use them or how to limit them um, um, in, in, in a in a very clever way. But it's very tricky. I don't have a, a, a perfect solution to give you. Uh, well, maybe you could tell people uh, more about what life in Israel is like. Uh, it seems like it's scary because you're surrounded by these forces that seem to be very hostile mm -hmm. but also I wonder what the metal scene is like for you there the metal scene in Israel is very uh, wide you can find bands from all kinds 
from black metal to folk metal to trash metal. Uh, all the bands in the metal scene are playing in Israel from Megadeth to Metallica. Uh, we're gonna support Ozzy Osbourne in, 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 in a month in Israel. So the scene is very active and, and, and amazing and there are a lot of metal heads in Israel. Great bands. Um, but life in Israel is very intense because you're, you're surrounded by so-called enemies that, that many of them are brainwashed and, and want, wants us dead. Uh, so there's a lot of brainwash, there's a lot of religious brainwash, press brainwash, political brainwash. This is one of the most brainwashed areas in the world. I think that Arabs are constantly being brainwashed about Israelis from childhood uh, up to the point where they grow up. And, and we're, we're lucky to be in a metal band that, that have, have a lot of Arabian fans. Uh, I think this is, this is amazing considering the brainwashing in, in the area so it's not easy to be an Israeli or, or to be a Middle Eastern but it's a very challenging place I think it's a very inspiring place and, and it gives me a lot of motivation to write about things and, and stuff like that I was uh, surprised when I received actually handwritten letters from Jericho City Saudi Arabia um, because I make jokes uh, in my entertainment I, as you will discover after this interview. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's strange. I've always told people that metal joins rather than separates. Maybe black metal separates because it's a very clicky type of musical field. But uh, you would say that metal has joined people who you would be surprised to have as your fans, correct? Yeah, you know, when you go to a metal festival, so you see people from all over the world and they share metal as their way of living um, we played in we played in Wacken in Germany and right in front of me I had two flags of Israel and two flags of Lebanon but it was right in front of me I mean the Lebanese could have been on the right side and the Israelis on the left side or they could be in the back or in the front they should be they they deliberately stood in front of me together that statement of we don't give a fuck because we're metalheads and and metalheads are one of the most coexisting communities in the world. I mean, of course, you can find anti-Semite bands or, or black metal bands who are not really into that. But if you take the whole metal scene, they're all one big family. I'm, I'm a fan of black metal bands. Nurgle from Behemoth is, is my friend. Uh, when he comes to Israel, he comes to my place and we drink coffee together. So, um, and, and I like black metal music, it's, it's, I think metal music is a great way of living. It has some of the, the motives of metal, reminds me of religion in a way. The dressing code, the idols, I mean, you can put a photo of Dave Mustaine, like, like you put the photo of Jesus or, or, your, or your idol. Um, and, and you can worship those bands and or people guys like Dio, you know, and, and, and the way that all of us are doing these things. There's a lot of dogma in metal. Uh, it's just that we don't tell you that we hold the absolute truth and you should give us your money. <laughs> you know, George Curlin says he loves you and, need, and, and he needs money. <laughs> is all-powerful, all-knowing, somehow can't handle money. So I think that the, the beauty of metal is that it's like religion, but we don't claim for having the absolute truth in our hands. We don't ask you to give us your money. And we don't tell that the way for heaven goes through us. Which makes metal very cool. In your yearning for peace, at least in your lyrics, do you as a person consider that to be an ideal that can never be reached is it unrealistic to think of peace imagine if we were all homogeneous there would still be arguments amongst us i think i think peace is something that we can achieve um it's it's enough to see israelis and germans today to to get to get hope that peace is possible because Israelis and Germans today are making love together, smoke weed together. Uh, our record company is German, our manager is German, we're Jews.
this is possible. If you change the education system, if you put the value of life, if you put human lives above anything else, and, and if the world will not accept that we will kill more people, then peace is available. Um, you know, l let me give you an example. Let's say 20 years ago, anyone could smoke anywhere. People on TV smoked while they did interviews. I smoked on an airplane 20 years ago. But at one point the world decided that we will not smoke in public places ever again. There is a sign here that I, I shouldn't smoke in here, in this room. Once the world decided, it happened. So we just need to decide. If we will decide tomorrow that no more people will get killed in wars, and wars are not acceptable, and we will solve our problems with education, with listening, with talking, it's possible.